Um, we we'll go back to the, the way in which the theory of change, which is the theory upon a scientist trying to prove a concept, gets laid out before it even gets tested. In the notion of antidepressants, um, with the monoamine theory, you really start looking at an effect of serotonin. It's associated with mood regulation. Therefore, if we regulate your serotonin levels in the synaptic cleft, which is the area in between neurons, we're going to be able to see some form of mood effect. That mood effect being highlighted, there should be a decreasing level in depression. That correlation, no causality, because obviously we are not able to prove that causality right now, that correlation has not been statistically significant for now several and several and several years and hundreds of clinical trials. And, so and there, was, there, was a, there was a new paper, by the way, I'm sure you saw it uh, just maybe a few months ago that came out by Moncrief et al. Mm -hmm. that, um, that found basically that, that concluded the, the, the body of evidence does not support the serotonin deficiency chemical imbalance model of depression. Absolutely. And it came out of shock in the industry for a lot of people. And when you speak to experts, they really weren't surprised. Apparently, this has been an assumption that has been made and really has been profitable for a lot of pharmaceutical industries. We talk about $13, $14 billion a year by utilizing this thesis and a medication that supports it. How ketamine comes in in a little bit kind of left side and its kind of commonalities with other psychedelic medicine is that it also affects the brain and it affects it in a similar fashion in terms of it producing some transformation between neurotransmitters. But the powerful thing of ketamine that's as of now it's intended to be that's kind of the primary effect of its benefits is that it targets the glutamate neurotransmitter network. And that network is the most common and potent neurotransmitter network in the brain. And so how that is linked to mental health is through the notion of neuroplasticity. Our, our brains are very, very plastic organs. They're actually constantly changing and modifying. They're firing neurons left and right. That's how we as human beings even exist. Our notion of I am and my consciousness comes from a somewhat ethereal effect of these millions of neurons firing each other on a constant basis. And what ketamine does, it has been shown to increase the neuroplasticity in a very powerful way. Within a matter of an hour, there is a very high neuroplastic window that it is probably sustained for about seven days, as it has been shown in uh, clinical trials. And what ketamine does, and the theory, is not that increased glutamate is going to improve your mental health. It is that this experience in which you are in this in a disassociative mode, because we have to remember ketamine started as an anesthetic. So for patients, that experience stands in the sense of them laying out, putting some eye mask on their eyes, putting some headphones, and letting the music for one hour and a half, one hour, take them through this journey. That journey in which their body is somewhat more in an anesthetic state, actually is a very fruitful one. Their brains are powered. They're uh, recharged. And so what that allows is for new neurological connections to occur. In its most basic format, we can think about it as if you think about your problem, you have an intention setting before the experience, and within the experience, you gain a slightly different perception or perspective into what that problem is. That, outside of the experience itself, allows patients to realize, hmm, I could maybe feel different about this. Or there might be a different way of thinking about this or acting on this sense in my life that I haven't tried. And that ultimately be the catalyst that changes people's mental health. And so, again, just to summarize, we have a very different basis of theory upon why we utilize the medicine and the dependency that patients must perceive of it. And then two, the chemical differences as to how it really targets the brain. Hey, this is Ari. I hope you enjoyed this video. And one more thing before you go. Actually, two more things. One is if you enjoyed this particular little clip, uh, the link to the full length podcast is in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Also, one more thing. Let me ask you a question. What if I could show you how to double your energy levels and dramatically improve your brain function, reducing your anxiety and depression to a degree on par with antidepressant drugs, but without the side effects. Sound pretty interesting? Well, there are in fact numerous compounds that can do this, that have been shown to do this. And I'll, I'll take you through just a few of these very briefly. One of them is rhodiola rosea. And this has been shown in studies, uh, rhodiola rosea extract in people 
with stress-related fatigue and exhaustion to cut their levels of fatigue and brain fog in half in less than a month. Just this one compound. There's another compound uh, in my formula Energenesis called NT factor phospholipids that's been shown to help repair mitochondrial membranes and mitochondrial health to the level of healthy 29 year olds taking people with deteriorated mitochondria who are over the age of 65, restoring it to the level of healthy 29 year olds. Um, and that has been shown in numerous studies in various types of chronic fatigue, aging associated chronic fatigue, obesity related chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome to increase energy levels by 30 to 45 percent in the span of four to 12 weeks, depending on the specific study. So dramatic improvements in a very, very short period of time. Uh, two more compounds that are amazing, I highly recommend that are in my formula, Ultra Brain, along with Rhodiola rosea. Saffron extract. This has been shown to increase levels of, um, improve your mood, I should say, and decrease levels of depression on par with fluoxetine, which is Prozac. And uh, not only that, but with fewer side effects, it's much safer and much less likely to cause negative effects than antidepressant drugs are. Acetyl-L-carnitine is another compound that's been shown to dramatically improve brain health in older adults. It also improve energy levels in older adults with chronic fatigue by between 40 to 50% in just the span of two to, th to four months. And uh, the last thing I'll mention here is acetyl-L-carnitine has also been compared to antidepressant drugs and been shown, like saffron, to be as effective as antidepressant drugs in combating depression, but without the harmful side effects that so often occur with the drugs. This is just a small uh, sampling of the over 35 compounds that are in my formulas, Energenesis and Ultra Brain, that are all proven to dramatically improve energy levels, mitochondrial health, and brain health, and much, much more. Uh, and I highly recommend that you go check these out. If you're struggling with depression or anxiety or brain fog, if you're struggling with stress-related ex exhaustion and burnout, if you're struggling with chronic fatigue, go check out these formulas, give them a shot. I promise you are gonna be blown away by the results. And like I said, the science has already proven that these things work. So you don't have to just take my word for it. Uh, there's lots of research to support that. And I'll even link to some of that research down below so you can verify everything that I just said for yourself. So the links to those studies will be in the description for this video uh, down below. So check them out. Uh, check out the formulas on the energyblueprint.com. Again, uh, Energenesis is the mitochondrial formula and Ultra Brain is our brain formula. Check them out, try them out, and I think you're going to be blown away by the results. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.